Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. In this new series, you will learn how to create Sudoku on Scratch 3. As you can see, it's a pretty powerful program with pen marks, pencil marks, graphic squares and all that other fun stuff. I'll also be teaching you how to add in a solution button which would animate the entire solution on the screen. Alright, so that's enough talk, let's get into our code. So rather than starting off from scratch with a blank file, what I'd recommend you do is um, open the link in the description and download this file which says Sudoku Start. And uh, once you download that, you can open that in either, you know, the online editor of scratch or the offline editor. And you would have this file right here. Um, the reason I told you to, uh, I'm telling you to do this is because I don't really want um, you guys to be typing all this out since this is just basically the entire board set up and you can just call in this function when we are using it and that should work out pretty well. So now I'm gonna move these two things to the side. I'm gonna move them right um, right below and uh, I'm gonna start this off with a when green flag click, uh, um, when green flag clicked and that's as usual. Um, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna broadcast messages all the while. So rather than, you know, just having um, start code, do this, do this, do this, I'll be broadcasting messages so that in the end, I could just broadcast those messages if I wanted to restart the game. So all right, so when the green flag is clicked and now we'll need a many uh, broadcasts and waits and make sure you add that wait there because if you don't, you'll start to get some errors. So I'll call a new message and the first one is going to be Dell clones. And this message is going to be responsible for deleting the clones of all the sprites. Um, I'll be finishing up all the messages and then I'll explain what each one does. Okay, so those were all the messages that we needed and you can copy all of them uh, right now. So Dell clones is going to delete all the clones and all the sprites and so we're going to be having a lot of clones. In it is going to be the starting and then it's during create square clones when we are actually going to you know create those squares where we click and um, put the numbers on. Now create number clones is going to be where um, we set up the initial numbers of the board. So the board obviously isn't going to be just a number of squares it's going to be some numbers in squares and then show boundary is where we add the darkening around the you know around the nine squares as well as the entire board. Now start is where the game actually starts and that is pretty much what you need to do or uh, what you need to know as of now. So I'm going to start this off by the init. So when I receive init and um, here I'm going to do two things. I'm going to set up two variables and you can also delete the my variable variable. And the first variable I'm going to make is going to be called um, start x. And the second uh, variable which I'm going to make is going to be called start y. And these two things represent where the square is going to start off. Um, where the center of the top left square is going to start off if you want to be more precise and um, When I receive in it what I'm going to do is call in a function and I'm going to run it without screen refresh so that this gets done a bit faster So I'm going to call this uh, function initialize and I'm going to click ok now I can just move this block to the side and uh, call it right here and within this block you can set start x uh, and start y to be their respective values. So I'm going to set start x to be negative 215 and I'm going to set start y to be about 90. And once you are done with this, you can now click on uh, upload sprite and then you have to navigate through your folders from the downloadable files to get this image called um, square and you can get the not touched file first and this is the not touched square and I'm going to rename this sprite to be square and I'm also going to go into the costumes and then upload the second costume which uh, of the square which is the touched um, sprite um, or the touched image if you want to call it. And these two are the images. As you can see it's fairly simple. It's just um, a rectangle with an outline but it's going to serve its purpose. Now before I proceed I'm going to change its size to be 150 so that we have the actual number that we are going to be working with. And uh, after this what you can do is uh, head over to events and grab a when I receive Dell clones. Now, like I mentioned, Dell clones is when we delete the clones of all the sprites. So when we do receive Dell clones, you just have to add in or, del or, or delete this clone. And after this, you can head over to events once again and grab a when I receive init. Now within this init, I'm gonna set up the square width and square height. And this is exactly why it's important for you to download this uh, particular file because I've made sure that the width and height are pretty much perfect. 
So you can just say set square width. Uh, I'm sorry, set, uh, and I didn't create the variable yet. Um, you can just call it square width and square height. So set that as well. And I know it's a square, so the square width and square height will be the same number, but it just helps to have those two variables um, used differently in their X and Y uh, values respectively. So anyway, uh, let's set square width and let's also set square height. And both of these in our, our program is going to be 31. So set square width to 31 and also set square height to 31. And um, once you're done with this, you can uh, get into the main part of the square of this video at least. And that is the when I receive create number clones. And this is where we have to create a whole bunch of square clones. And this is where things start to get a little bit messy, but just stay on because it is pretty easy if you really think about it. So first I'll be setting the um, costume to be not touched, but I'll be setting it to not touched because not touched is the costume that it needs to be while it's not licked on. So set it to not touched first. And um, then after you're done with this, you can also hide um, the particular sprite because we want only the clones of the sprite to be seen and not the sprite itself. And um, now it's important to set up two, um, two new variables and uh, those two variables uh, square counter x and square counter y. I should probably come up with um, shorter names, but anyway, let's go ahead with it. So square counter x, then we will set up another variable called square counter y. And once you click OK, you can also hide um, those variables because we don't really need to show them. And um, you need to set square counter y to be zero first. And um, the square counters are uh, used to have a temporary ID basically, which is going to decide where exactly the square clone needs to go. Um, you'll understand when I actually start to do it, so um, just hold on a second. Um, since we're creating 81 clones, we will need um, uh, 81 uh, different create clone um, of myself. And um, since we're using nested loops, it needs to be instead of a repeat 81, it's going to be a repeat 9, and within that, it's going to be another repeat 9. And before we put in that repeat nine, just put in this uh, block of code, which is set square counter x to zero. Okay, and once you're done with this, what you can do is go into this loop and just say create clone of myself. Very simple, but just do it as of now. After this, I'm going to create another variable, and this time it's going to be a Boolean variable called clone set up. Okay, and um, you can do this and then click OK. And this clone setup needs to be set to um, set to no before we create a clone. So set clone setup to no. And uh, after this, after we create a clone, I mean, you can add a wait until create clone, um, um, not, uh, not create clone, um, clone setup is equal to yes. So wait until this is the case. And um, then we can proceed by changing the square counter X by one. So change square counter X by one. And after this, we will also need to change square counter Y by one once we have passed through this loop. So change square counter y by one, and that is pretty much going to be it. Now what you can do here is when I start as a clone, so when I start as a clone, here we need to go to, so you can head over to motion and grab this go to x and y, and here you need a couple of operators. So um, first let me do it for the x, you'll need a plus, and follow that up with a multiplied by. And um, before I proceed with that, actually, I'm just going to add in a show right at the end of this. And I'm also going to add in a set clone, um, set clone set up to be yes. So we'll be um, continuing with this loop only after we've created the clone completely. So um, right here, what, um, where exactly do we need to go? Well, the first thing is we need to go to start X, which is the first coordinate, the, uh, I mean, the least X coordinate, if you want to think about it. And we'll go to square counter X. Uh, multiplied by square width and that's going to be our x coordinate and for our y it's going to be kind of the same thing but our y coordinate is the maximum on top so while we're coming down it's going to keep on decreasing so instead of a plus we'll be needing to use a minus followed by a multiplied by now just like we did for our x it's going to be start y minus square counter y times um, times the square height and that is going to be all we need and um, I think when you uh, hit the green flag, you can see that we create a whole bunch of clones here. And I think by mistake, I set up start X or start Y to be um, their wrong values, or uh, maybe something else went wrong. Either way, I'll check my code out once and then I'll be right back.
So I just went through my code and the error turned out to be in the controller sprite where I set um, both the values to be start x instead of um, start x and start y. So once you set start x to be 90 um, and then you click the green flag, you can see that our clones show up pretty neatly on our board. And uh, before I end this video, I'm gonna do one last thing and that is to make sure that each of our clones has a different ID. And to set up an ID, you can set up a variable called clone number and that's gonna be our ID. And I'm doing it in lowercase because I wanna set it for this sprite only. So you can click okay and also hide the clone number. So initially we'll be setting clone number to one and each and every time we create a new clone, we will be changing the clone number by one. If you just do this, it means that each clone, whenever it was created, is gonna have is gonna be created at a at a time when the clone number was a different number, and we can get the clone number of each clone um, by just saying, you know, say our clone number or whatever. So that'll be very useful when we get into the next videos where we have to enter in a number and all of that. But as of now, just add that in place and I'll explain how that works um, a little bit later. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.